Hasbro's given us the same versions of characters for decades again and again. Will it ever stop? Does it need to stop? Let's talk about that right now on Transformers Talk Raw. You know, I have mixed feelings on this subject uh, a good bit, guys. Um, you know, Hasbro, like I said, has given us multiple versions of the same character again and again, over and over, over the years. How many blurs do we have in the chug scale now or in that line, generations in general? How many jazzes? You know, several, hot rods, several. Um, does it ever get old? Is it a good thing? Let's explore this a little more. And I have, like I said, mixed feelings. I think there's good things about it. I think there's bad things about it. But let's get right into it. By the way, guys, I'd like to thank you for joining me this week. We're going to be announcing our giveaway winner at the end of the segment. So stick around for that. Also, we'll be hitting up the news. Check out all those great links in the description below. That's going to lead you to all kinds of cool stuff, including our Facebook group. We'd love to see you guys there. Come visit us, chat bots with us, share your own channels or pages, whatever you like. We'd love to get a discussion going there and see you guys there. You can also help support the podcast via Patreon. That link's going to be below as well. Visit our eBay store. It's my personal eBay store where I make a little side money to help support the podcast further. But let's get right into it, guys. Again, thanks for listening. If you're on YouTube or Spotify, uh, you know, we have, there's, there's figures there's the, the bad things about it. Let's cover that first, for example. The bad things about us continually getting the same versions of the character is it takes away spots. And this is all my opinion. You know, feel free to disagree. Let me know in the comments if you do. But it takes away spots that could be reserved for otherwise characters we haven't seen. And there's plenty of them, guys, in G1 alone. So I don't want to hear that. Everyone's been done. Everyone has not been done. I can rattle off probably two dozen off the top of my head that have not been done yet. You know, we still don't have a squawk box, a beast box. Uh, box, a Squawk Talk of Beast box. We don't still, you know, just in cassettes. I know he's coming, but we don't have a steel jaw yet. You know, so that's, and we haven't seen one in a long time. I think Titan's Return gave us the last steel jaw, and it really wasn't steel jaw. Uh, but it, anyway, there's tons of guys that they haven't done. Uh, Thunderwing recently, we haven't gotten him. Now I can go on and on. But anyway, you know, one of the bad things is it takes away those spots that could be reserved for other characters. Another bad thing, you know, is, you can get character fatigue almost, you know, how many Optimus primes do we have now? And they're coming out with another one this year. Another thing is I think some people are biased towards anything new. They think automatically it's superior and that's a mindset I'm really against. I've always been against it. And I know content creators within the transformers community that are like that just because something is new. Not only do they have to have it, but automatically it's going to replace your existing version of the character on your shelf for your collection, which is a ridiculous line of thinking and reasoning to me. I think if a figure is better, it's better. And in some cases, the new ones are better and others, the old ones better. And I'll give you examples of these. The old RID Scourge, for example, is in every way almost superior to the legacy version. You know, that thing had, it was, first of all, was based on one of the best molds in Transformers history, in my opinion. It had lights. It had vac metal all over the trailer. It was sturdier in hand. It had almost, almost as much, and this is crazy part, because the mold dates back to like 95, 96. You know, it was the last part of G2 almost. Uh, it, I think it was for the Laser Prime. It had almost as much hard articulation. You could get him to look like he's holding his sword with both hands. He couldn't do it, but you could make him look like it. You know, that figure was just superior to the RID scores, or the Legacy scores, I'm sorry. But there's more than one example. Uh, to me, the original Transmetal 2 Megatron, Dragon Megatron, was way better than the Legacy. In my opinion, I know some folks disagree with me on that one. I just think he looked better. In Dragon Mode, I think he looked better. He, he felt better. He was sturdier. He had that sweet vac metal that didn't chip. It was well done vac metal. That's another thing that irritates me. I know this is off topic, but Hasbro acts like it's such a big deal just to give us a little vac metal now. When Mattel does it at retail all the time, they do it for the Motu Origins line. So, I mean, or the Masters of the Universe Origins. They did it with uh, the character uh, Jitsu. Had a whole arm covered in vac metal, but they act like it has to be a HasLab thing. Oh, he's got, that's a, such a special feature. You know, that's nothing for them to do that. 
Sure, it might cost a little more, a little more, but Jesus, it's not that. It's like they're acting like it's going to break the bank for them to do that. It's ridiculous. It's so stupid. That's not a feature. That's something that should be there on Transmetal 2s. But anyway, I'm getting into a side rant there. But there's there's a few bad things about continuing to rehash the same characters. But there's some good things, too. You can continually improve um, an existing figure, a character, or a representation of an existing character. And the case in point is the latest Studio Series 86 Hot Rod. That figure was, to me, the best Hot Rod ever made. To me, it's one of the best Transformers ever produced, if not the best Transformer ever produced. That's my opinion, at mass retail. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. Um, you know, I was a little bummed out, to be honest with you, that we didn't initially get, you know, very quickly after they released the Legacy Stunicons, that we didn't initially get a Legacy Superion. We know that we have some coming, an updated Superion, but there's part of me, guys, that honestly really enjoys the Combiner War Superion. It still scales pretty well. It still looks good. The Superion, or the Menasaur, we needed an upgrade of him. He didn't look anything like his G1 self, but the Superion does, other than Alpha Bravo. But then again, if you have Quick Slinger or Slingshot, it is the G1 Superion. So it's really not as justified to me them redoing that. You know, Devastator, I think, you know, a lot of people have problems with the Combiner Wars Devastator, but I thought it was a brilliant figure. I still do. And I think he does scale very well with the current 86 um, Dinobots. You know, I think he, he would scale better if in that scale than he would if he were Menasaur's height, which he probably will be. And we know we're getting new Constructicons, I called it. So, I mean, I, it's just ridiculous, guys. But anyway, let me know in the comments what you think all about all this. We're going to move right on to the news after a word. We all enjoy that special something that may help us remember the good old days. It may be something Grandma had in the living room. It may be that special Christmas gift you begged for and eventually got. Or it may be something simpler. Whatever the case, you can not only help support the podcast further by checking out our eBay store, but you may just relive some of those old memories just by picking up that special item. The really cool part? We have a perfect selling record and offer free shipping on most items. So support the show a little more, if you like. Now, on to the news. And up first in our news this week, we know that the Transformers 40th Anniversary Soundwave and Blaster G1 reissues, as well as the some Beast Wars reissues, have been found in Canadian retail. And I thought you guys had already gotten those, those Beast Wars retro reissues, because uh, the States have been having these for a while. You know, I bought my nephew, uh, Wolf Fang, last year. And he was in clearance. You know, I just, I thought they were already up there for some reason. But I'm glad you guys are just now getting them. But Jesus, it's kind of late. The Soundwave of Blaster looked good. But of course, I think they cheapified uh, those figures in a lot of ways. We know that there's no die cast in them. Or at least there wasn't in the Walmart versions from a couple years back. But, uh, and I don't think there's any in this. I could be wrong. But I think they've cheapified them. Uh, but anyway, moving on, we know that the, in every one, their mom has been talking about these, the Legacy United Doom and Destruction Attack Squad, Chop Shop, Barrage, and Malleus Minotaurus, whoever that is, three pack, as well as the Breakdown Animated, or Prime, I believe, and Windsweeper two pack is now available to pre-order via Amazon. And I don't care about, uh, Windsweeper or Breakdown that much. It's not the G1 Breakdown anyway, and we already have him, but... I don't care about those characters. I don't think a lot of folks are excited about that breakdown. Now, the Deluxe Insecticons are very interesting. Of course, respectively, they're heavy retools of the shrapnel and the bombshell. Uh, but, and I think they look fantastic, guys. Of course, now you're going to have a lot of folks wanting to go back and grabbing that ransack from that Creatures Collide 4-pack instead of you know, selling them off and just taking the gold bug out of there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think they look fantastic. I'm psyched for the Deluxe Insecticons, especially when they announce and reveal Venom. But that's the only one they haven't yet. But I think they look great, and if you, you'd like to pre-order, you can pre-order them via Amazon. Well, we also have the Optimus Prime <laughs> Squeak and Tug dog toy, which is available via Ross in the U.S. now. Squeak and Tug dog toy. So now your pooch can chew on Optimus Prime with the best of them. So if you have a dog and... You want to show that dog that you love Transformers and enjoy the hobby with him. Let him chew on Optimus a while. We also know that Stan Bush is to attend TFCon LA next week, March 8th through the 10th. I believe it's next week. I'm losing my track of my days here, but the, you know, he's a true legend. I don't need to explain who Stan Bush is. Wonderful, wonderful musician. 
Um, did a, and it, you know, actually, I appreciate a lot of his work from other films other than the Transformers. You know, he did a lot of the Van Damme movies. I mean, he did Bloodsport. He did uh, Kickboxer. Uh, so, but I'm just a fan of his work. Just a fantastic, talented artist. So if you're out there at TFCon LA, say hi to Stan Bush and let him know T Talk Raw says hi. But we're going to wrap things up and announce our giveaway winner for the week, guys. And our giveaway winner for the sealed legacy bombshell is going to be the Machine Museum and Air and Space. So, man, uh, holler at me on via X, or you can send me an email at ishonthecursed at yahoo.com. That's I-H-S-A-N-T-H-E-C-U-R-S-E-D at yahoo.com, or holler at me via Twitter. But if you didn't win, guys... Uh, hang in there. We have a giveaway every month. We're going to have another one again real soon. So stick with us, guys. Lots more giveaways to come. I think that's the second or third bombshell we've given away already. So you have a very good chance, and I appreciate everyone participating. We're going to catch you back next week for another segment. God bless you guys, and to all our one. This podcast is made possible thanks to the support of great people like you. Thank you. 